Hey there, welcome to another episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this episode you will see the interview that I did with Felix. You might know Felix from his huge hit uh, Don't You Want Me which came out in 1992 which happens to be 25 years ago this year. Uh, I thought it was a good reason to do a vlog about this track especially because it's one of my favorite house classics of all time. Uh, I found out he was living in LA these days so uh, that's the place that I booked for my vacation so I decided to write him an email. Two hours after my email I got a e reply back already and he agreed to do an interview. So in this episode you will see the interview that I had with Felix about his track Don't You Want Me. Enjoy! Yeah the production process with the track Don't You Want Me was, um, it was very very quick. The actual final track. What had happened is that I had already done a demo version of the track uh, which was like a piano based kind of uh, thing which was loosely sort of structured around like Steve Silk Hurley and that kind of house sound at the time. When I'd sent it off to Hooch Tunes, Jeremy, he asked me to come up with a, an alternative version. So that's when I came up with a version which had the, the organ sound in. Loosely done as, as a demo. Um, then when we went to, uh, well, I went to finally record it, it was in a studio in Essex Road, which is in uh, near Islington. It's in Islington in London. So because the track was pretty much done, it was just a case of putting it down, adding some elements, and the whole thing was done within a day, with a day and a night, very, very quick. Did we think the track was going to be a success when we were actually doing it? No. <laughs> the short answer is no. I mean, I, I was obviously very keen on the music and believed in my music, but um, I think it was because it was quite a different kind of track for the time. I don't think anyone had any idea that it, how successful it was going to be. And I know for a fact that Jeremy at Hootsunes had no idea how successful it was going to be because most of the deals he did at the time were two single deals he did with the other artists. With me, he just did a one single deal. Now, if he had thought it was going to be a huge, <laughs> a huge track, he would have done a two single deal. So I don't think he felt it was going to do too well, but um, that, that was, uh, it was, it was unexpected, the success. At first the track came out um, on Hooch Tunes, which is a, a very popular but small independent label at the time. Kind of in the progressive sort of sound, I think it was pretty much known in that sort of world. And they'd had tracks with Andronicus was one of the big ones that they'd had before. The release came out and what actually happened to make it successful in my mind, although it's impossible to know, was that there was a, the Pet Shop Boys were doing a guest DJ hosting session on Radio 1. They did, it was in the spring of 92. So they were there for a couple of weeks at Radio 1 and they somehow got hold of the record because I think it was doing quite well in the clubs at the time, in some of the underground clubs, and they just played it all the time, made it like their record of the week. So that was really what propelled it really big. From that point, some guys at uh, Deconstruction, James Barton being one of them, heard the record and they decided to sign it to Deconstruction. And it was out of my hands at that point because I didn't own the masters, Hooch Tunes owned it, and so Deconstruction came in as being a much bigger label and they had some real money behind them with BMG they were part of, so they could really promote it. And that's what really drove the single to be, to be big. And it just got bigger and bigger and bigger like a snowball. <laughs> yeah, so you could see it happening when, when, when they kind of got behind it. What I'm most proud of uh, with the single, Don't You Want Me, is probably winning the uh, 1992 DMC uh, Best House Record of the Year uh, Technics DMC Award. That was really a fantastic honour because there were some amazing records that year, some really huge records and that, to be to win it at that time especially and, and, and receiving the award, it was at the Royal Albert Hall which is a very prestigious, famous place in, in London. That was a massive, massive honour. I really enjoyed that. That was, a, that was a big thing. Well, the best memories I have from the release of Don't You Want Me are not necessarily things that happened at the time because you know, at the time it was very crazy and things were going on all the time. But what I really love is when people come up to me and say, I have this story about it, or this happened when, when I heard that record, oh, I met my girlfriend or my other half, or you know, or I was at this club or that club and wow. And it, what I really enjoy is people's personal stories. And 
99% of the time they're always a happy story because that record just tended to make people feel happy you know so I really like people's stories about how how the record touched them that's my, my, my favorite thing do I have any idea how many remixes have been made um, the short answer is no <laughs> at one point I did try and go on SoundCloud and try and put a playlist together of all of the unofficial versions and I got to like 30 or 40 or 50 unofficial just on SoundCloud. There must be 20 or 30 official versions as well. I would estimate over a hundred. There's got to be over a hundred versions, different versions and there's, there's new ones all the time, especially when people are doing mashups and combining the track with something else. I see them popping up all the time. So which is my favorite remix of Don't You Want Me? Um, there's been a few that I've really enjoyed, especially some of the Italian ones that were done years ago back in the 90s. There was a set of Italian remixes that were really good. And we did a re-release in 2015 where we had some really cool remixes as well. But to be honest, it's a really, really difficult track to remix. I did um, a couple of remixes myself for the package and I found how hard it is to touch because the original is so embedded in what we know that anything that deviates from that, people tend to react with, I don't like it, I don't like it, why have you ruined this record? And we got that a lot. I mean, even with, there was a huge remix by Dimitri Vegas Like Mike, which was not everyone's taste, but it was a big, big remix. But people were getting really angry about it <laughs> because it was, you know, how dare they ruin this track that we know. And even when I touch it, they're the same, you know. They don't want you to touch, they don't want you to touch it because it should be left alone and reverential. So I think that it's a hard thing to do, but I, I've, the remixes I've enjoyed are the ones that kind of try and get a little bit away from the norm. So there's, there's, there's quite a few, there's quite a few. I wouldn't like to single one out. Okay, do I know how many copies of Don't You Want Me were sold? Um, no, I don't know for sure. There was some talk back in 94, 95, the record company at the time, Deconstruction, put out a press release saying that it was somewhere in the region of several million, which several meaning over a couple. There was never been any exact figures and in actual fact, Years and years ago, there were some legal problems where we didn't feel that stuff was getting reported correctly. That was not really ever settled um, and never, never really cleared up. Um, but I would estimate it's going to be in the region of three, four million copies. Complicated now with how streaming works, it's, it's, it's got to vary. But, um, the short answer is no, we don't know for sure because the record companies don't like to give you that information <laughs> for obvious reasons. So what am I up to these days? Um, I've been living in Los Angeles now for five years. I have a, a small independent record label of my own called Dance Effects. Um, I've been putting out releases. I think I've had over a dozen little releases on, on that label, which is getting quite a good, good lot of uh, critical feedback, so I'm getting some good critical support. I'm working with a lot of other really cool artists, collabing with artists. I've, I've done so many really cool collaborations. Did a big thing last year with a guy called Brendan Riley, which I really enjoyed. He was a singer uh, for Disclosure. That was really good. So I'm getting to work with some amazing people doing some collaborations. DJing, love to DJ, so playing out is really good. I get to the great thing about DJing is that I really keep my finger on the pulse for the kind of music that I'm into, which is I'm mostly kind of a, a in between underground and sort of strict, sort of more straight house, you know, that kind of style, a bit of bass house. So I'm, I'm really enjoying listening to new music, finding new music all the time, working with new artists, working with collabing with people, and yeah, just putting out music. Really, I think the stuff that I'm doing, I went through a patch where I wasn't really sure the direction that I was going to go in again. And that was about the time that I moved here. But I think I've now found exactly the kind of way I want to be doing stuff and the sound that I'm going for. And it seems to be clicking into place. So, yeah, I'm enjoying it. All right, that was it. My vlog about Felix and Don't You Want Me and the interview that I had with him in Los Angeles. 
Once again, Felix, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. I hope you guys enjoyed the interview and I hope you enjoyed the vlog. Uh, make sure to leave a comment in the comment section below. If you like it, feel free to share and of course, feel free to like and very important, make sure to subscribe so you will be the first to get a notification once there's a new vlog online. Thanks again for watching and until next time, bye bye.